What was your favorite way to fish? Um, but still, you know, reading a bait. Yeah. Did you have a favorite reeling bait? Yeah, the spinner bait still. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. It's, that's the most fun of all. You know, <laughs> in fact, but see, when I said earlier, I had to change, but I didn't have to change baits. That last terminal one on St. John's in 2019, mm -hmm. the last day I had five that weighed 34, 14. Oh. Had two nine pounders. Oh. Every one of them came on a spinner bait. Oh. Except one, and he missed it, and I picked up a soft worm and threw back and caught him. Oh. So, but spinnerbait, yeah, it's yeah, oh, still yes. my favorite. Yes, uh, I think in Japan, even in Japan, that uh, spinnerbait still working is well. It? Yeah. That maybe is it best, popular over there? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, best can't you know remember or understand the you know this blade right. pitching and with skirt. Uh, I don't know how you know, but the. Uh, Still working well, but uh, the other lure, the crankbait or some, it, without uh, no cover rake and uh, not using a bottom, mm -hmm. no cover, so those lure not work well in Japan mm -hmm. already. But the spinner bait without no no cover, no cover, you know, seeming the you know clear water, but still can catch the fish. Yeah. I don't know what the difference. Uh, spinner bait is uh, more stronger than bait the fishing pressure area. Yeah, it's just it's just very versatile. You know, it's very efficient, the spinner bait is. And like you say, you can fish thick cover, you can fish weeds, yes. you can fish brush, you can or you can burn it in clear water. Uh, burning. Yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and burning really takes away a lot of the, the bass's ability. He's a predator. He's mm -hmm. got it, something's going by slow, he has time to investigate it. But if it's going by fast, he's got to make a quick decision or it's going to get away. You know, predators are like lions in Africa. They, they're designed to kill the weak, mm. not, not the strong. And so if you can indicate in a bait weakness, which you can do a lot, in other words, you're reeling the spinner bait and you stop it and it flutters, that, that looks like it's weak. Or if you're reeling it you, or you bounce it off something, all of a sudden that indicates weakness. And that, that's the strongest things with predator and prey relationships. A lion doesn't try to kill the biggest water buffalo out there. He kills, he looks for the weak ones, he looks for the young ones, he looks oh, for, yeah. the, for the sick ones. Mm -hmm. And by design, that's good for both species. <laughs> Because he removes the weak from the herd, the herd stays strong, and yet he doesn't wipe out the whole herd. Or if he doesn't attack a big one, and it kills him. Mm. So that's a lot of people forget that about bass. They forget the predator-prey relationships. Well, I think the thing that's most important is the ability to fish the moment, and that's the toughest part. In other words, don't fish history. History is important. Uh, but it's only important if you're not trying to force it on the fish. In other words, in other words, these guys are going out there today in the classic. They had a big storm last night. It could have muddied up creeks. It could have, and so if you go back with just, I'm going to force them to do what I, how I called them yesterday, and the conditions have changed, then you're just being hard-headed. So having, an, having being intelligent, using science, but still, that's just to assist you to fish the moment. I, mean, I have a lot of experience. Noriel has a lot of experience. But that can be baggage. Noriel's been to Kentucky Lake. He's won a tournament there. Is he going to try to make those fish? He's going to try to catch those same fish that he weighed in years ago. And he's going to try to do the same thing. Well, it takes you a day or two to get that out of your system. So you're wasting time. Where if he, if, he, if he would go out there and say, wait a minute, this is, this is a different condition. The wind's blowing, I feel a certain humidity. And now, now you, here's how you use that experience. You got this bucket of things that you know how to do. So now you look at the current conditions and you go back in and you select out of that bucket of intelligence and experience those same conditions. But if, if you want them this way and you, and you like to fish this way and you, or do, you're doing those instead, it's gonna hurt you. It's kind of like I said, you, you have to allow the today to naturally unfold. Don't try to force it to be what you want it to be. Yeah. What do you think? Most important thing? Well, the my fishing is a learning from the 
Rick. Getting I I been watching him well. He always camping ground using then the, having a fresh air, fresh temperature. You know, changing the you know weather. Everything he feels the on purpose. So I understand. Oh, okay, that's the best fishing. That that's I need to understand. Sometimes even that very hot weather, the Lake Mead, Las Vegas. I'm not staying outside, but I tried in the hotel, kill off the, you know, air conditioner. Okay, I gotta start the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, train. Yeah, <laughs> the, no. But but it was uh, hot too much. But it's what I learned from Norio and Takahiro Amore and others was, and we know this, the Japanese culture is very observant culture. And so they're, they're watching you all the time in detail, more than you think they are. He couldn't speak very good English. Uh, Takahiro couldn't speak any at all when he came over here. And, you know, to this day, I'm just kind of off the subject, but people say, do you, you ever talk to anybody about fishing? You know, fishermen are notorious liars. So, uh, uh, but, uh, but the only person I never caught in a lie even some of my best friends was Takahiro. He never lied to me. Or at least if he did, I didn't catch him at it. <laughs> so it was fascinating to, and at all the time and he's just constantly watching you, you know, and, Nor and Norio and was doing the same thing. So they learned, a, we didn't know how to help them. I wanted to because I thought, golly, how courageous is it to fly all the way halfway across the planet and come and you can't even speak the language Half of the people over here misunderstand you, you know, and you go, wow. You know, I just, my heart just said, wow. Another quick story about Takahiro, I did a survival fishing school on my farm and there's about 30 people there. And, it, and I wouldn't allow them to come, they had to camp out. They had, I made them sleep in tents camping and they had to camp out. And, uh, and but right at the end of it, Takahiro said, could I please come to your room and look at your classic trophies? I said, sure. So he came up there and he walked into my office and I had those four classic trophies up there that I'd won. And he said, can I touch one? And I said, sure. And he went, he goes over and he grabs the trophy and goes, all of a sudden he just goes in another world and goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just holds it. Just like, and you know, next year he won the classic and then I saw, I mean, it broke, I mean, I just my heart went, wow, I almost started crying because he was doing that same thing with his trophy now. So, <laughs> so he was just trying to visualize, you know, he, he knew enough about, he took a lot of mental stuff because he knew I was very mental about what I did. You know, I was using a lot of visualization and meditation and everything, you know, to, to, and, and he, he studied that. So but I didn't tell him to, he just observed it. So, and that's why he's such a good bait designer because he, he, you know, he's an artist too. That's what, yeah. Yeah, you're an artist. Thank you. More than I am. Yeah, yeah, I, I just uh, concerned about the Japanese bass fishing the future. Very, very, very much. Yes. Recently, more strong, stronger thinking, you know, how we can protect the, you know, bass fishing history. Right. In, in Japan, the more, get more longer, get more stronger, but... Uh, Commercial the, fishermen yeah. in Japan, yeah. No, no, I'm not a commercial fisherman only. Um, recent, not really? No, no. Yeah. Recently, the commercial fisherman in that fresh, fresh water right. is mo almost gone. Oh, really? Yeah, really? because uh, no, no fish well and uh, no get a uh, good business. So yes. mm -hmm. every commercial fisherman is uh, in the ocean. So in the fresh water, only that uh, nobody protects the water and mm -hmm. also that the uh, uh, put a uh, lots of using Japanese people using a uh, lots of the chemical yes things that uh, uh, farmers right you know chemical things yes but the Japan is uh, such a small country oh yeah as you know and not and a lot of what lakes yes yeah. and the small water right so that all the hills run down yes, into the lakes yes yes yeah. 
Oh, changing oh, wow. very much. I, I didn't thought about that. Does Biwa Co still have all the grass or has it killed all the grass? Ma, almost. Almost. Ma, lots of killing and then gone the bluegill. Yes. <laughs> no bluegill. No. Almost very small quantity. Oh, yeah. no, that's... So changing uh, very quickly. You know, right. two, two, three, four years, then changing, changing, then getting worse. Remember, we went to Biwa Co. And early in the morning, I got up before we were going on the water, and I saw all these young Japanese kids, I mean, swear they were 10 to 15, mm -hmm. walking down to the lake in the dark with rods and a tackle box oh, in yes, their hands. Yes, yes, yes. And they went down, and they were having a little tournament themselves. And, uh, and they got in all these rowboats, and they fired a gun off, and they could look down, and look like they were rolling out to go fish their uh -huh. tournament. Do you still have, that was a lot of young anglers. Is that still going on? No. You don't still have no, the young anglers? Because I can't catch the bass well. Why? Why? Bass quantity is right. very getting less. Yeah. So uh, before as a young kids, the trend to start the bass fishing. But now, right now, nothing there. Yeah. So getting a bass population, you know, yeah. population bass people, population getting down and mm -hmm. also bass getting down yes and also that the power up the you know chemical things yeah. so what the future we, we yeah. should well, think about just the opposite is kind of happening here our young anglers are increasing oh. all of our high schools are having clubs and having tournaments uh -huh. and there'll be over 300 teams at a high school tournament and and uh my, my youngest son fished those teams, and now these kids are going to colleges that give them small scholarships to go to college to fish for that college. Oh. And so, so I never saw that coming uh, because all other sports had little leagues and stuff to recruit young people, but we really didn't have it. They kind of did it on their own. And we, uh, unlike you, we fight water quality all the time too, but we have so many more lakes. The reason these companies are selling chemicals to other countries is because we won't let them use them as much over here. Unfortunately, they, so they go sell them someplace else. Uh, but but our, our conservation departments are very, con you know, concerned about water quality and mm -hmm. that's been good and the fisheries have gotten better. So I'm real optimistic about it. Uh, the only people complain now is that there's too many people fishing. Well, it's just like here, so many towns in, in, have recognized the economic value. And so that, then they're, they're, they're supporting it and it, that encourages it. One of my, still to this day, one of my favorite audiences has been the Japanese, uh, you know, audience. And uh, I think, you know, the ESPN voted the all-time greatest angler here a while back. And I thought, I didn't have a TV show, so I thought Shirley Rowland or Jimmy Houston or Bill Dance would, would win it because of the, of the coverage they had. And I ended up winning it, and I finally asked ESPN people that were responding, and they said, well, in the Southeast and the Northeast, it was real close. And Kevin Van Dam might have got a few more votes. He says, but when you went West, you got all of the votes. And he said, we were actually getting votes from other countries. And he said, you got a lot of votes from Japan. Okay, so. Oh, arigato, thank thank huh? you. Arigato. I missed you. I really missed yeah, you. Yeah, same there. Yeah, appreciate oh, well. it. Yeah. So, do you have a still keep going to the on the tournament forever? Yeah, that's the only thing that keeps me alive. Oh, okay. <laughs> I learned COVID taught me that that if I don't challenge myself mentally and physically, I'm 76. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. It's like a house that nobody lives in, the lights start to go off. No, so, still no problem that driving the, with the boat? No, no, there's, I love the best time, and my wife tells me this, so that's another reason I keep fishing. She says, when I get up in, on the water, mm -hmm. and I, she says, I put the troll motor over the bow, yeah. I go from 76 to 26. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that's good, you know? <laughs> so, so, no, fishing is my video game. Mm -hmm. uh, my son, a lot of the world's in video games. I know it's very popular in Japan. Uh, but fishing is my video game. You, oh. you go on the water, every day is a different day, and every day you're trying to figure them out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you do the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I, because uh, you know, 
I, I was, I've been watching you, so. If he, you, you quit the fishing, or okay, I should, I have to fishing that till the same age as you, you know. Yeah, when so. I quit fishing, I had to be digging a hole, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, so. yeah, hopefully, you know, keep going to. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Drive safe. <laughs> it's not too far, I think. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.